season. Are you ready for God's word, everybody? All right, good. Both of you, thank you. Is anybody else ready for the word of the Lord, everybody? All right, good. Grab your Bibles. Let's pray. Father, speak to our hearts today. I pray for people in this room that need to say yes to Jesus. Holy Spirit, right now, I'm asking you to tap somebody on the shoulder and say, it's you. I pray that somebody would say yes to a new life in Christ. I pray that you'd speak to our hearts through your word today. In Jesus' name. Everybody shout a big amen. Come on, you didn't shout that. Shout a big amen. Amen. Good. This is an amening kind of church. And uh, I, uh, I've already heard this message once, and it's good. Just going to be honest with you. And um, I want you to receive from the Lord today. We are in a series on fruitfulness in our lives. And I want to teach you today. Thanks, Kara. I want to teach you today. By the way, I didn't say hello. If somebody shared this message with you, or maybe you're catching this, the majority of our online audience catches it on demand, kind of in Netflix culture and Netflix style. But if you're joining live or somebody shared this message, I'm glad that you're on the other side of the camera. Come on, everybody in the room, say hello to everybody on the other side of that camera. So we're in the, we're in the series uh, on, uh, on fruitfulness in our lives, that God has called us to be fruitful, not to just be faithful, and not to be fruity, <laughs> just, but to be fruitful, that God wants you to produce some things in your life. You, you didn't get saved to be a consumer. You got saved so you produce some spiritual fruit. And, and the, the Bible actually talks about it being, uh, it's not even for you. And it's honestly, it's for the world, but it's not primarily for the world. John 15 and 8, if you have your Bibles, we're in John 15 is kind of the, it's the benchmark of, of this discussion about fruitfulness. John 15 and 8 said, this is to my Father's glory. It's not for you. It's for God. This is, for, this is for, to my Father's glory that you bear, everybody say, much fruit. That you bear much fruit. And if you'll do that, you show yourselves to be my disciples. If I were to give this message a title, it would be Environment Matters. Environment Matters, right at the top of your notes. Brandon and I often, we have two uh, children. If you're new to our church, I have a 10-year-old little girl uh, who hates uh, boys and always will. And I have a little boy who's uh, seven years old. And um, we often talk about the discussion of nature versus nurture. Do you ever have these discussions? Not about your children because your kids are perfect. But you always look at other bad kids thinking, how did that happen? You know, <laughs> like, what happened to them? Or, or maybe you watch, you ever watch one of those true crime stories, you know, on TV? Nancy Grace, anybody else? You know what I'm talking about? I just can't, I can't look away. And, or, or you listen to a true crime podcast and, and, and you think to yourself, man, how did that kid get to that, you know, how did it happen like that? You know, that's somebody's kid and, and, and what went wrong. And, and so we have this discussion about nature versus nurture. What stuff are you born with? And what stuff uh, uh, do, do you pick up in your environment? And we have this a lot. Uh, we have this discussion in our house. My seven-year-old little boy is uh, short and uh, husky. I'm not sure where that comes from, but he's, that's a, it's a little bit of DNA. Are you with me? Everybody? I'm not sure who's, but it's a little bit of DNA. It's a little bit of, he just can't help it. It's just nature. You know what I mean? He we uh, tell him, and I expect you to tell him, he's not fat, he's just thick. Come on, somebody. And he, somebody asked me the other day, I was over, I was with Randy uh, the other day, and he said, that's, that's going to be a big boy, and I hope so, because he's my retirement plan. Uh, so y'all don't have to pay my retirement. He's going to play football at the University of Arkansas in Jesus' name. And so, um, but, but his short and husky, that's, he, can't, he can't help that. That's just the way, that's just the way he's made. Are you with me, everybody? But his attitude and his spirit, he can help that, right? That, that's the stuff, we talk about this often. That's the stuff we, we, we put in. He can, you can control your own spirit. We teach our children. This book teaches in Proverbs. It actually says that a person who doesn't rule their own spirit is like a city whose walls have been taken down. You're vulnerable if you don't control your own spirit and attitude. And, and so there's some stuff he can't help, some stuff he can. There's some stuff that's... That he was just born with, but a lot of the problems of his life, he just he's got a control on his own. I have a little girl who is covered in freckles. Again, not sure where uh, she comes from or where where that comes from, but she was born with them. And the older she gets, we name all of her 
freckles, and we're, we've got hundreds of names for all of the freckles that she has, and uh, uh, she's beautiful that way. And we've told her that I was born; I'm covered in freckles the same way. I I, uh, I I don't tan. Where's all my white brothers at? Where y'all? There you are. Yeah. I'm, I'm I have two colors. I'm either white or red. Come on, somebody. That's that's all I got. And then when the red peels off, there's white underneath it. That's it. And Brandy and my little boy, they tan, the little jerks, and, and I, we don't. We're just, we just end up, we just, and that's, we're just born that way. But when she rolls her eyes when daddy talks, she wasn't born with that. She learned that from her mama. <laughs> Are you with me, everybody? Some stuff you're born with, some stuff it's the environment you're around. Listen to me. Most of the issues of your life are not generational curses. They're generational choices in your life. Most of the issues of your life have nothing to do with what you've been given. They have everything to do with what you do with what you've been given. Most of the issues of my life are not in my seed. They're in my environment. I'll preach it to you like this. Some people say, I I just can't change, Pastor. I'm just... I was born this way. I, there's nothing I can do about it. I've always had a bad temper. I've always, this is kind of how I always have been. You know, everybody knows this. I'm just born this way. You, you really think you were born. You, you really believe God created you with a nasty attitude. No, God didn't create you like that. You really think you were born negative. No, you were raised in a negative household and you learned how to respond to every situation in negativity. Are you there, everybody? It's not about how I was born. It's about the environment I, I, I'm, I'm surrounded by. Uh, you, you think you were born lazy. Not, I know some of your kids think you were born lazy, but you, they weren't. They're just an environment that didn't have high expectation on you. So you learned other people would do it for me. And now there's, now there's this entitlement spirit in my life. You think you were born to be a gossiper. No. God didn't create you in His image to be a complainer. You were raised around people that complain. You were raised in an atmosphere of complainers. And you may have married a complainer. Or you may have complaining friends. You know that one friend that when you go to the restaurant, they always send something back? And you always just duck your head and say, just eat it, Karen. Just eat it, please. Just eat it. Just eat it. Please don't do this. Please. If your name's Karen, I apologize. Please just eat it. Just don't. I'm so embarrassed right now. God didn't make you like that. God didn't make you not to have an honoring spirit. God didn't create you to be an addict. God didn't put His Spirit inside of you to make you rebellious. Your environment produced that, not the seed that you were given. And I'm going to go ahead and take two minutes and talk about where we are culturally. And if you don't agree with this, you can email all of your complaints to brandy at City Hills TX. But listen, there is a demonic spirit. I'm telling this. I know I'm joking, but I'm being honest about this. There is a demonic spirit loosed in Western civilization disguising itself as progress called critical theory. And critical theory says there's only two types of people in the world. People who are oppressors and people who are oppressed. In Jesus' name, I rebuke critical theory out of your mind and your spirit. You were not born oppressed. God didn't give you a wrong seed. God didn't. I don't care how you were created, the color of your skin, or the side of the tracks you grew up on. When you were born again, you became a child of the Most High God. You're a king's kid. God put His Spirit on the inside of you. And I don't care how the world views you. You can get out of your situation. You can grow beyond. I say it like this. Even though you didn't come from faith, doesn't mean faith can't come from you. You may have came from dysfunction, but function can come from you. You may have came from negativity, but positive thinking can come out of you. You may have came up in poverty and lack, but abundance and prosperity can come out of you. I'm going to preach it to you all eight minutes. You may, you may have come from somewhere thinking, I can't and we can in a limiting environment. But just because you were born that way doesn't mean you're destined to stay that way. Write it down like this in your notes. You are producing. This is the hardest thing I'm going to tell you all day. You are producing exactly the life that your environment is nurturing. 
you are producing exactly the life that your environment is set up to nurture. So when you look around at your life and you think, my goodness, what's wrong with this marriage? What's wrong with this people? What's wrong in this relationship? Why is all of this bad? I, I don't want you to look at, God, you need to give me a new marriage, me a new friend, me a new job, me a new house. It may be, God, is the blessing and the seed you gave me, did I put it in the right environment? Or is it nurturing an environment that's growing fruit I don't like? Let me say it better like this. You can't plant in wrong soil and then pray for crop failure. Because the book says, whatever you sow, you will. There's a law about soil. You have the exact marriage that your environment is nurturing. You have, this is, I know it's hurting your feelings. That's why y'all got quiet. This is the exact, you have the exact attitude that your environment is nurturing. Stick around. I'm going I'm I'm to help you with it. This is the exact, you have the exact mental health that your environment is nurturing. I'm not talking about clinical stuff. I'm talking about if you are constantly in an emotional state of stress and worry and depression, so much so uh, uh, next uh, month, uh, my, I already know my sermon series. Can I tell it to you? I'm, ex- I'm going to do it either way. I don't know who you are, but I like you. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to tell you anyway because God, God already gave it to me. So uh, in September, I always answer whatever your biggest question is on the Easter survey. If you were here for Easter Sunday, we do an Easter survey, and I ask you, what's the biggest thing you want to hear from God's Word? And without question, unequivocally, five years running, you, ask, you answer the same exact way every single time. It's always the same, number one, and it's how to handle stress. It's how do I handle depression and stress and worry and anxiety and fear and all that stuff in my mind. So I'm preaching to you in two weeks. I start a new series called Struggle Bus. (laughs) And I'm going to get you all off that bus. Because you have the exact mental health that your environment is nurturing. You have the exact emotional health that your environment is nurturing. You have the exact spiritual life, prayer life, devotion life. That your environment is nurturing. Get ready. Buckle up. (laughs) It's going to get bumpy for the next little ride. Quit blaming how you are and start looking around at where you are. Because how you are isn't broken, but where you are matters. How you are isn't what's wrong. God didn't create you to always be depressed and down and out and broken. God didn't create you to always be negative and lacking and, and never, never happy. God didn't create you to always have struggle in your life and always have a marriage that struggles in relationships. God didn't create you so that everything falls apart. No, it could be the environment that where God put his seed on the inside of you, you planted it in the wrong environment. Shout amen to that, everybody. Where you are. Your environment is the number one determining factor to your fruitfulness. Now that's the hardest thing I may have preached to you in a while. Your environment, your surroundings, the people, the situations, the input, the, the, what you allow into your life, the soil of your life is the number one determining factor In your fruitfulness. We say it like this to young people. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. I'll show you. You you show me your friends. Show me the people you're around. Psychologists say that you're the average of the closest five people in your life. Look at the five people around you. The people closest to you. How are their marriages? How's their finances? How's their mental health? How's their spiritual life? How's their prayer life? Look around them and you'll realize environment matters to me. Where you're planted matters to God and it should matter to you. And it's the determining factor for fruitfulness in your life. Shout amen to that. So last week after I preached about seed in your life. You didn't catch that message? Go back and watch that message. I talked about God putting seed in your hand and what do you do with the seed in your hand. I had a dream teamer send me a couple of pics of her garden. Now... I appreciate it. I want you to send me a bunch of pics of your garden. Where's all the gardeners at again? Let me see. I just need to know where to get tomatoes. Good, good, good. I appreciate you sending me pictures of your garden. Also feel led by the Holy Ghost to bring me squash and okra and all other things from your garden. Not just pictures. But she sent me a picture 
and this is the first one she sent me. It was a pumpkin seed, and she said this was the seedling uh, pack that it came in. I didn't, I didn't do anything to it. I just, I put it inside of there. It, it's the, it's the, it's the package that it came in. I didn't transplant it to a bigger package. I'm going somewhere. You better watch me. I, I didn't put it in outside. I didn't, I didn't water it. This, I didn't put it in a nutrient-rich environment. And this is as big as it ever got. It never grew. It stayed stunted. It stayed small. It just it stayed right where it was. Look at me. Not because the seed was wrong. But because the environment was wrong. And you've been blaming your seed for the bad situation you find yourself in. God, you handed me the wrong marriage. God, you gave me the wrong situation. God, you didn't set me up for success. God, I didn't go to the right school to get a good job. God, I wasn't raised in an environment like that, thinking about progress and faith. No, no, no. The seed isn't wrong. It's the same seed of all the other pumpkin seeds she got. It's just in the wrong environment. She sent me a second picture. She said, this is the same pack of pumpkin seeds. Next picture. It's the same pack. I just took it out of that little seedling pack that it gave, and I transplanted it, and I put it in a bigger pot. And when I put it in a bigger pot, I moved that outside. And outside there was sunshine and the rain came down. And I, 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 I worked up the soil and I mixed some fertilizer in it. And that pumpkin came up a whole lot different than the first one with. Why? What was wrong with that first seed? Nothing's wrong with the first seed. It's about the environment you put it in. Look at my eyes. You cannot stay in a small, toxic, dry dark environment and expect your life to flirt. I'm preaching better than you're amening. You can't stay in a small, dark, toxic, I don't know, this isn't right, I would, I'm just born this way, God created me wrong, God didn't create you wrong, you just didn't get out of that small area and decide, transplant me in some healthiness, put me around the right people, get me around some successful people, get me around some faith-filled people, get me in a church that preaches that God can do anything, get me in a place where I can grow and the sunshine can hit my life, get me some rain water of the Holy Spirit falling down on my life. Get me some fertilizer of the word and immediately there's fruit that comes out of your life. There's fruit. Much of the lack of growth in every area of your life is not because of your seed. It's because of your soil. It's not that you were dealt the wrong hand. It's what you did with what you got. Write it down like this. Often, I told you this last week. Psalms 92 says, Planted in the house of the Lord, they flourish in the courts of our God. They continue to be fruitful and bear fruit in old age. I told you that last week. But listen, often you need to get planted. But occasionally, you need to get transplanted. Right? So last week I told you, you you may just need to get planted in the house. But sometimes you need to decide, you know what? This little container, this thing I was raised in, I was raised to treat my wife poorly and talk it down to her and talk about how terrible she is and always point out what she does wrong. And the marriage that I have has nothing to do with the wife that I have. It has to do with the soil that I was raised in. I told you, man, I'm coming for y'all. So I just decided if I want a better marriage, I don't need another wife. I just need better soil to plant our marriage in. I need a bigger place. I need a more nutrient-rich place that I can put my life in and and I can have something. I need to transplant. You may have not come from a church like this where you could experience the presence of God. I'm I'm not bemoaning where you come from and the environment you were raised in. I'm just saying if it's limiting and it holds you down and it keeps you under and you're never fully developed, maybe you need to transplant into God's wide open spaces. Maybe you need to have a little sunshine on your life. 
life. That's why this church is full of joy. We preach about joy. We sing about joy. We write joy. It's a value of our house. Why? Because I want you to come to the house of God and have a little sunshine on you. I want you to have a little joy that will grow in your... You may not been raised in a place that prays. You may have never prayed with your parents one day in your life. That doesn't mean you can't bring your kids around the bedside and say, Babies... Daddy doesn't know what he's doing right now, but let's pray just a little bit. Now I lay me down to sleep. Anything will work. But just because you didn't come from it, you weren't raised in it, doesn't mean you can't make a decision on the last Sunday of August. I'm going to get transplanted into some healthiness. I'm going to uproot myself from this way, and I want that life. Shout amen to them. Check your soil. Touch two people and say, check your soil. Check your soil. Check the soil. You, you ever seen a gardener walk around there? I don't know because I kill things, but but I've seen them. They walk. They walk around, Randy. They walk around. And they put their hands in the dirt. I don't know what they're feeling for. Moisture. The depth of the you know the roots are going. I don't know, but they're always checking it. Brandy, she, she's growing a fiddle fig. All 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 women are growing fiddle figs right now. And, I blame Instagram, and so it's it, it's in my house. And she's con- she told me the other day. She said, "Go, go, go check the dirt." I said, "Baby, I can go play in it. I don't know what I'm checking for. I don't know what I'm doing over here, but I did it. I just got ooh. Mm. <laughs> it's dirty. It's, <laughs> there's dirt over here. What am, I, what, am I, what am I looking for? She said, "You got to look for moisture, and you got to look for are the roots on the top of it. You got to check the soil of your life." Just because if, if, if there's an area of your life not producing, check the soil. If your marriage isn't growing, y'all better buckle up. This is the, I'm telling you, we're going to cut through the clouds in this one. This is going to hurt your feelings. But if your marriage isn't growing, if it's not producing, are you hanging around godly couples? Or are you only hanging around people who are already giving up on their marriage and they're encouraging you to do the same? It, if you're sitting in a pod at work in a cubicle with a bunch of other women who hate their husbands, it's amazing how bad your husband will get. Not because that joker changed, just because your environment said all men are bad. And you'll go home and figure out, you're right. You know, I didn't think about it, but I don't like you. (laughs) Karen at work told me not to like you, and I don't like you. And you'll end up with... I'm I'm helping you. I'm saving you thousands of dollars in counseling. It's got nothing to do with him. It's got to do with environment. Men, I'm coming for you. You better get ready. Cover up little bitty ears. If it's not, if the intimacy isn't what it should be in your marriage, you can't watch porn together and expect intimacy with your partner while you're watching something fake and false on the internet. Don't say nothing, just look right at me. It's got nothing to do with her. Mama still got it. You're just in the wrong environment. The soil isn't right. Are are you following me, everybody? If your relationships always end bad, if you're single today and you think, I can't find the right one, there's just no good girls left. There's no good, this is what I always hear. There's just no good men. There's just no good men. They're either married or Gardeners, they're either mad. <laughs> stop, stop, don't laugh at that, don't laugh at that, that's terrible, don't laugh at that. I, there's just no good men, look at me, there's just no good women, I just can't find somebody to marry. Well, if all of your pickup lines work at the bar only, then you're fishing with the wrong bait. You need a new topwater jig, come on somebody, you need, you need something new. I, the best pickup line you can have is, honey, what service do you serve at? That's the best pickup line you should have. I didn't see you at 21 days of prayer. Are you new here? (laughs) What what small group are you in? Those are the pickup lines that work. Whatever bait you catch them with is the bait you got to keep them with. I'm helping you all today, Pat. God, one or two things going to happen. We're going to have revival or I'm going to run everybody off. (laughs) Can I keep going? If your mental health is struggling, if you're struggling, if there's darkness. I'm, matter of fact, the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart in between services. In this service, there's somebody struggling in mental, with your mental health. 
you're struggling with depression and anxiety and worry and stuff and dark, and there's dark thoughts. It wakes you up in the middle of the night. There's even some suicidal ideation. There's some stuff that, it's just, it's just dark. You, 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 you're seeing things, you're feeling things. Listen to me. I'm not telling you it's not, it's not spiritual. I'm, not, I'm just asking you, check your environment. Go back and look at your Netflix history. Go check your Spotify playlist. I pulled up the other day to a new coffee shop in town. I won't tell you who it is, and just in case they, um, somebody goes to church here that works there, but it rhymes with on the grind. And so they were... <laughs> it's our favorite coffee shop. It really is. It's a true story. Not that I'd lie to you, but this is a real true story. And I pull up to the window, and I'm the only one, and it's early in the morning. And the window's down, and I, pull the, uh, I roll the window down in my truck. And I hear the loudest most angry death metal I've ever heard. It's, it's my hand to God. And I pull up to the window expecting to see somebody with black fingernails. I mean, I, you know, I'm, 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 I'm expecting to see Darth Vader serving me coffee. True story. There are two young girls in this coffee shop. Just never... My first words, Jeffrey, I looked him right in the eyes. <laughs> I should have asked, are you okay? <laughs> like, blink twice if somebody's back there holding you hostage. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> my first words were, everybody all right? <laughs> she was like, oh, yeah. I said, well, you know, the, <laughs> the death metal threw me at 7 a.m. <laughs> with two young women. And she goes, oh, it's a vibe. I was like. No, that's not a vibe. Listen, I'm, I know it's funny, but I'm telling you, you can't feed your spirit with that all day and then can't figure out why there's darkness at night. I'm being honest. You can't fill your heart with dark things and dark shows. Go back and look through your Netflix. You can't, if it's murder and mayhem and blood everywhere, and then you get troubled in the middle of the night. It's environment. You can't, you can't fill it up with garbage. and then ex- You can't fill your mind with trash and expect it to grow peace. If you're gossipy and negative and you think, man, all these people, I don't understand what's wrong with them. Look, look around. Proverbs says that if you walk with the wise, you'll become wise. But a companion of fools suffers harm. There's just something about the people you're with. It's why I tell you to lead a small group. That's why in two weeks we launch a whole new semester of small groups. Because I want you to be around wise, godly, positive influences in your life. Now, i got seven minutes and i got four points. And I shouldn't tell you that. Because you're going to be looking at the clock. But I'm going to tell you, turn to Luke. Hurry. Turn to Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Turn to Luke 8. Jesus is telling the story of seed. I don't have time to teach it all. If you're on the media today, I'm going to skip around. Media, just follow along. Luke 8 and 5. A farmer went out to sow his seed. If I had time to teach you, I would teach you that his seed is his seed. He didn't complain to the master about what he was given. This is just the seed I got. And he went out to sow what he'd been given. And as he's scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, birds ate it up. Verse 6, some fell on rocky ground. When it came up, the plants withered because they didn't have any moisture. They had no way to get water. Other seed fell among thorns. It grew up, but it choked out the plants. Verse 8, still other seed fell on good soil. Listen, and look what happens. It came up, and what did it do? What did it do? It was fruitful. It's, look at me. Same seed, different soil. The fruitfulness of your life isn't about the seed you've been given. It's about the soil you planted in. It yielded a crop, and not just, here's what I love about the God of the Bible, not just a little one, Mark, a hundredfold, a hundred times more. Yeah, I told you last week, you can count the seeds in an apple, but you can't count the apples in a seed. It's a hundred times more if you'll get it in good soil. God, I feel like preaching this. So there's four types of soil. i got to give them to you really quick. Number one. Luke 8 and 12, those along the path are the ones who hear. The devil comes, takes away the word. He says, that's the first one. Here, here's, here's the four types I'm going to give you. Number one, the contaminated soil. There's, there's, 
it lands, but there's junk in our heart. It's rocky ground. There's, it, it, there's stuff there. There's sin in your life. There's hurt. There's offense. The book says that, that a, a brother offended is like a, is like a, is harder to win than a whole city. It's like a citadel whose walls have been torn down. You, you, you let hurt and offense come into your life and God's purpose can't grow up into you because there's contamination there. There's stuff you've allowed in. There's sin. Sometimes it's stuff you've done. Sometimes it's stuff that was done to you. Sometimes the criticism, I, I got pretty thick skin. I've been doing this over 20 years. But sometimes an email will get me and I'll be praying for you. And before I know it, 30 minutes will go by and I hadn't prayed one bit for you. I just keep thinking about that dumb email. And I pray like David prayed about his enemies one time. David's praying about his enemies in Psalms, the 60th chapter. He said, God, strike them in the jaw and break their teeth. <laughs> That's my favorite. Sometimes I'll pray, God, punch them in the mouth. And I'll look up and it'll be 30 minutes and I didn't pray. Why? Because there's offense in my life. There's hurt. And now I can't get direction for this church, not because the seed's wrong, because the soil's wrong. Are you following me, everybody? Here's number two, right quick. I know you take good notes. Luke 8, 13 says, The rocky soil represents those that hear the message with joy. Like young plants, the roots don't go very deep. They believe for a while. Hot winds come. I call it the competing soil. There's something else competing for your attention. The other day I was at the front of the building and somebody was talking to me after service and we had worship music still playing and I couldn't quite understand what they were asking. So I did what all good godly preachers do. I just smiled and said, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I may have told them to go jump off a cliff. I have no idea. If it was you, I'm sorry. I just, yeah, yeah. Not because I, I, I just couldn't hear. Are you with me? I just, it was, there was noise that was competing with what they were saying. And sometimes in your life, it, the fruitfulness that d isn't showing up in your life isn't because God isn't trying to get to you. It's because other things are crowding out. They're competing for God's attention. They're competing for all that stuff in your life. They're, they're telling you you can't do it. You, 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 there's just competing voices. There's competing uh, uh, schedule. I can't serve. Oh, really? Let me see your calendar. And it's filled up with other stuff. I'm not telling you all the other stuff's wrong. I'm just saying you make time for what you want to make time for. There's, I can't afford to tithe. Oh, really? Let's look at your checkbook. I'm not telling you it's wrong. I'm just saying it's competing stuff in your life. that It's, it's prohibiting you from fruitfulness in your life. Number three. Verse 14. Jesus, this is, this is the... One of the only parables in all of the Bible where Jesus actually explains the parable. So he, he gives the parable, then he, then he breaks it down. Verse 14, he says, The seed that fell among weeds stands for those that hear, but they go on their way. They're choked by life's worries, riches, pleasures. And they don't, underline this in your Bible, and they don't mature. I called it the childish soil. Come play so they think I'm uh, finishing, team. Um, there is a psychological epidemic uh, in our in our nation, and I love our young people. I, I love. Matter of fact, we are investing more in the next generation. We're betting the farm on the next generation uh, at this church over the next year. Um, but and this is one of the reasons. There's a psychological term called delayed adolescence, right? And they're de it's it's young people are staying young longer, and they're not they're not they're not maturing. You got thirty year olds that that aren't mature. Stuff that you did when you were 18, it takes them to 28. Are you? Does anybody know what I'm talking about here? People that don't get their driver's license, maybe you're in the room today. And I'm not. I'm not making you feel bad. It's just when I, the day I turned 16, Mama checked me out of school. We, I had already bought a car, and I went and got my license. You know, and now I meet 19 year olds that don't drive, and I'm like, honey, <laughs> what, what are you scared of? And and there's there's this epidemic, honestly, of de of delayed maturity. Listen, and it's affecting our spirituality, and we never grow up. We never grow up in God. We never mature. Look, check your environment. Is it a bunch of brand new Christians? If it is, then you, you're at the same level. You may need to get somebody a little bit further. Here's the last one. Verse 15. But there is seed that falls on good soil. 
It stands for those with a noble and good heart. Listen, who hear the word, they retain it. Here's the operative. Here it is. And by persevering, what happens in their life? They produce a crop. They're fruitful. They're fruitful. It's not a seed problem. It's a soil problem. I call it the cleansed soil. It's, it's, where, it's where you've, you've cultivated the right things. You've done the right things. 2 Corinthians 7 and verse 1 says let's make a clean break with everything that defiles or distracts us both within and without let's make our entire lives fit and holy temples for the worship of God let's do everything we can to prepare the right environment maybe you're here today and you look at your life close your Bibles you look at your life and you think man I wish it was more productive in this area Man, I wish I had more fruit in my marriage. I wish we had more fruit. I, I wish there was productivity in my relationships, in my, in my work life, in my, in, in my career. Maybe your spiritual life even today. You think, man, there's just there's a lot of lack. Let, let me just tell you, it's not the seed, it's the soil. So check the soil this week. Look around for the right environment. Get in a small group. Lead a small group. I think about 10 or 20 of you in this service need to lead a small group. We have small groups for everybody, men, women, students, young people, young couples. Stuff for everybody. But you need the right environment to grow in. Get on a team. I know you hear that. You say, Pastor, when are you going to start talking about it? Never. Because this is stuff that grows the right stuff in your life. If you don't like this preaching, this isn't the church for you. I love you. I bless you. I release you into your destiny. <laughs> but this is a church who doesn't just study the Bible. We do the Bible. We do the stuff in that book. The stuff in that book says you're a missionary. You're supposed to be on mission, doing something for God. So get on a team of people that are doing something for God. And you'll, you'll start growing the right stuff in your life. Are you with me, everybody? Did this help you today? Anybody? Did it help anybody in the room? All right. Okay. All right, bow your heads for prayer. Lord Jesus, pray for people in the room today who need maybe a transplant. The environment that they're in is producing a harvest they don't love. I pray for strength to sort of take a next step towards where I need to be. If this is for you, nobody's looking around right now. If this is for you, would you just say, include me in this prayer. Raise your hand all over the room. I see you. I see you. Keep your hand up just as a, a sign of faith to God. Father, I pray for hands that are raised that just feel like the environment isn't really helping me. Who I'm with, where I'm at, where I was raised, what, what I'm allowing into my heart, mind, soul, spirit. It just It's not producing the right fruit. So I'm just asking you to give them the courage and strength and give them the guts to say, I, I, I got I to gotta transplant some stuff. It may be hard. I may lose some friends. I, I, I got to get to the right environment because I'm not growing the right things. There's no fruit in my life that I'm proud of. I'm praying for marriages. If you're married here today, take your spouse by the hand. Come on, take them. But this may be the first time I'm helping you get over a fight right now. <laughs> Squeeze their hand. Father, I pray for the right environment in marriages. I pray for a spirit of forgiveness in marriages. I pray, God, there'd be mercy and grace where there was offense and hurt. Where there's a wall that's built up, I pray that you tear it down in Jesus' name. I pray for an environment of encouragement and that they're encouraging one another. They're praying with one another. Sticking together. I pray for single adults. I pray for the right environment to find the right spouse, their partner, their purpose partner for life. I pray for that, God. I pray for people in the room today who need a transplant in their minds. There's, there's, a, there's an anguish and an attack in their minds. I pray... Let them check the environment, the soil. What am I putting in? How can I get out? God, I thank you for your presence in the room today. Now keep your heads bowed. Holy Spirit, I pray for people who need a new start today. 
There are people under the sound of my voice who need to say yes to Jesus in water baptism. They need to follow God. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to do what only you can do and tap somebody on the shoulder and say, it's you. It's you I've been dealing with, not just today, but for a long time. And today you need to say yes to God. Isaiah says, today's the day of salvation. Today's the day that you just say, yes, I, I need a new life. I need something brand new. Father, I pray people would be willing to follow God today and say yes. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody shout a big amen. Amen. Do you receive the word of the Lord, everybody? All right. Stand up.